Now we have a crazy second one. So we, we got Icelander. Uh, I'm not sure if Henry's going to stay or not. Uh, we'll find out in about two seconds. Yeah, I would say, yeah, keeping on Leviya. I mean, again, it's it's just rough with ice being out there. So it's it, I would imagine Prism probably doesn't do super fantastic into Icelander. Mm-hmm. So it's probably good to just get the win on Leviya and then be able to lock it in for that third game there. But, you know, still seeing all the AB package like we did in our previous game there. And now we're uh, we're really trying to check out to see whether or not Icelander can really bring the control to this Leviya and stop her from being able to uh, transform into the demi hero. Yep, and we have an Aether Ice Vein coming out. Uh, this is huge, being able to stop this. So you know, we're once again running that mini me X. I mm. absolutely had a plan into the AB heroes. Uh, all of these deck lists are posted before, um, but he would have had to lock his deck list before. So like him knowing, like, hey, I'm probably going to be facing Arcane is is quite insightful. Um, Mm -hmm. but we all knew Teppa was going to be bringing AB or bringing arcane where he had bringing the arcane heavy AB (laughs) definitely powerful in this format. And again, I mean, just the, the ability to constantly play on your turn and then also your opponent's turn is uh, a lot to deal with when you have uh, significantly less life than you would in classic constructed. And so now you really have an idea as to, how this game is going to move forward, uh, you know, with you're going to need an AB package and you're going to need to be able to still swing some damage through or at least be able to prevent enough to where you don't need to, you don't need to worry super hard about your opponent's uh, arcane damage coming into you. Yep. So we got a pulp coming in for dominate go again. Um, let's see. This is tricky though, because so we ha- does have two cards, right? And you got to be ready for, for ice or something coming in here. You can only mm-hmm. block with one, so he's going to absolutely get go again. Coming in for three damage, and then I would expect an ice card to come out here, but no. Yeah, it looks like they're just... Well, I mean, I think the real plan here is you also just want to wait until they have absolutely nothing left in their deck, or in their hand, I should say, mm-hmm. for them to just respond with that. That way they don't have as much AB to deal with, because if that's blue in their hand, it does significantly less, and I'd imagine it is, but now they're going to have to arsenal that card if they don't want to just keep it in their hand. If they do, it's definitely a blue. If they don't, then it's something they can use for their next turn. But it is kind of crazy that we don't see anything so far on the Icelander, uh, any kind of ice cards. They do run quite a bit. So, Oh, I wonder if it's a red. Yep, it's got to be a red. So a red. Red. There's a nice, a nice bluff on Henry's parts. That's uh, something you just learn against Wizards is, you know, it, even though you're able to do stuff on your opponent's turn, you don't want to overcommit. It looks like Icelander is coming in with a you know the fi- the good old finals fighting spirit. They had that life parity, able to gain that life and uh, really utilize that Goliath Gauntlet to come in with a ton of damage. This, that's brute damage coming in for a wizard <laughs> <laughs> for nine nine. This is not this is not easy to block out. Obviously, so mm-hmm. Henry's got to pick it and go. I actually wonder. So while well, he's deciding to block. Him starting out with Leviya makes me think that he actually thought that this was going to be the first matchup. Uh, mm. And he didn't think it was going to be Canada. This is one of the cool things about that two hero format is you kind of mm-hmm. check out your opponent because Prism against Kano is is absolutely insane. Right? Yeah. Prism can can handle Kano just fine with all those with the especially with the wards from the angels. And so you gotta imagine that coming out as Leviya, he was expecting an Icelander. Um, and him winning, right? Yeah. With Kano, like that's a big deal. So now Leviah has to face off. So this is the matchup I think he wanted. Um, yeah, so, it's just a one match too late. So yeah. maybe we'll see this go into a game three. But at least, you know, it looks like at least having enough resources to punish your opponent. I mean, uh, it's kind of interesting seeing people play agile windups as opposed to, you know, using them for the agility mm-hmm. token. But I think. Uh, Henry here really is understanding the fact that you're probably not going to be able to get to do two things on your turn, especially with the amount of resources that Icelander strips from your hand. So coming in with a a little bit of anything and stripping some cards from their hand is going to be great, but it looks like no blocks coming in just for six damage. Icelander is going to have to have a pretty, uh, a pretty solid turn in that regard. Oh, well there, there it is. I know. The specializations. This is what we're talking about. This is that that clash goodness right here. Ice Eternal coming in. 
Is that three ice cards, or two, two ice cards, and one Aether Ice Vein blue? So four Frostbites on Leviah. Now, is that a Frost Hex is the real question. He's coming in. He's going to deal. I didn't see what he fused it with if he fused it. Yeah, I didn't see a fuse either. I'd imagine I imagine he would have had to, but it's uh you know, at least four frostbites that definitely does okay. put a damper. He did, he did fuse it. So because he, he pitched a block, um, some of that damage come in. Arcane arc, that's what is a fantastic tool, but arcane damage does get a little bit tricky to follow sometimes. Yeah. That is crazy that is that is being able to put that much down i mean you have to to play a smashback alehorn and have to pitch all of that for the frostbites mm -hmm. that's your whole hand to play a smashback now of course it's a good setup turn right so you're Absolutely. at least able to get yourself ready for you know the next onslaught now that you know that you're one ice eternal down the ice eternal frost x combo is something that is pretty deadly in uh icelander for clash so now that well, you kind of have one down and, and I think I think you want to do that just because he did have something in Arsenal. You don't mm -hmm. want the Frost Hex popping out and then dealing for damage against you, right? So you don't just want yeah. to pass pass around. So I, I get the I thought process behind this, and I think we'll see if it pays off, right? He did do one Frostbite. Uh, you just got frozen, your Arsenal. Arsenal just got frozen. And then Waning Moon just came in um, and dealt too damaged to him so mm -hmm. there was a big turn that he icelander absolutely stopped from happening you know having that in there but henry definitely came in this with a plan i think he has a plan an idea that he uh, has in mind of what he needs to do in this so if you notice he's playing a little bit more methodical unless of like mm -hmm. let's go brute smash face as much as possible he's holding cards back he's purposefully trying to make it where Icelander has to make decisions and not knowing he's never once given him an opening of like, here, you can do free arcane damage against me. Absolutely. I think that's the it's just one of the more terrifying things in regards to, again, playing on your opponent's turn is you have to know that you don't draw up until the end of your turn. So when you start your turn and Icelander can then just respond with any of their ice cards from their arsenal really does a lot. So we've got... Oh, yeah. Man, that freezing everything chain. in this arsenal. That was a crazy chain. He made him pitch and so he wouldn't discard. Wow. Then he popped his helmet. He did that twice. Wow. Then he popped his helmet, froze it. And then he just did ice bind into him, dealing more damage. This wastes nearly all of the uh you know those tokens that they had made with the smashback Elhorn. So this isn't gonna be some crazy big swing attack. This is simply just gonna be a mini meat axe for four with go again and mm -hmm. nothing else. But now he's you know, Henry's got nothing left in his hand. So is there going to be, you know, there's no no way to prevent any kind of arcane from this situation. So it looks like they're just willing to take some damage and throw in a meat axe. Yep. So cold snap. So Icelander does draw a card. We know Awakening Moon is probably coming off the back of this to mm -hmm. bring them down to 10-10. But that was an absolute crazy turn by Icelander to just be like, I don't need to deal damage. I just need to stop you from having a crazy turn off of mm -hmm. you, know, you spent everything to get that smash back out for now. And now I'm making it where you can't do anything with that. Yeah, definitely. Definitely not a super great turn off of Henry's end. Oh, the doomsday. Doomsday no. just started from the meat axe. Well, that uh, unfortunately is not a, uh, you know, a spe there's nothing special in regards to that. And luckily, Leviah doesn't actually have to deal with uh, with blood debt if they're just pitching all of their cards. They don't have to worry about playing any of their attack reactions. They can simply just come in with meat axe and make that happen. Mm -hmm. There's the one downside, right? Doomsday is one card that you would love to have. But when mm -hmm. you're playing something like a mini meat axe or meat axe in general, wild rides any of that stuff you know you draw you discard you don't have control over that while they are amazing things those are risks that you put in place when you're doing absolutely it. and it looks like it looks like this might have been a mistake on uh tepa's end it looks like they were trying to block with the spellfire cloak 
Uh, I'm sure they meant to activate the Spellfire Cloak as opposed to blocking with it, because obviously it has a zero block value, so it does not block for anything, and its ability says that you can destroy it to gain a resource, but only on your opponent's turn. So I'm assuming they were trying to set up a little bit more for their turn to really get something going there, but they don't really have much else they can do. So not sure what their plan was there. Yeah, well, while, while you say that, I've actually seen Tepa do that a couple times just on purpose, just because they can. So huh, while, really? I think, oh. while I think maybe it was a mistake, I... I have to go, I don't know anymore because I've seen him do that a couple times. It's just like, I'm throwing this in front of it, whatever. <laughs> Some 500 IQ plan that I am too. I, I'm not a <laughs> wizard player enough for me to know that you throw Spellfire Cloak in front of something and it does something great. So <laughs> it does it. It's just funny. I have, I, this, this, this isn't the first time I've seen him do this. So that's kind of like, oh, I wonder why. <laughs> Well, no armor now for Icelander, but a Frost Hex is certainly a great way to get that set up. Now, those Frostbites mean a lot more. Now, granted, Henry's been able to pay for them pretty consistently if he does get any Frostbites, but the Frost Hex now giving them additional arcane damage onto them is uh, its going to be a lot, especially when we see that Ice Eternal come back around. Mm -hmm. There's our banished cards. So... Mm -hmm. We got in a couple sixes, got Doomsday in there, so there's a non-hit, which is, I'm sure, Henry's loving that, the fact that mm -hmm. you know, he's able to grab a non-hit in, in that process. Ooh, Arctic Incarceration. Man, this is a rough card. Arctic Incarceration really does, even though it's just one Frostbite, one Frostbite changes an entire turn in most cases, especially if you don't have resources for it. So, Well, this is actually... Two frostbites because oh, that's of right too. Yeah, because you get the Icelander ability and then also the Arctic incarceration. So, man, yeah, two frostbites. That is all. Well, you know, that's worse. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it's only for a blue dread screamer too. I think these, you know, the power of the cards. Obviously, it's great to get that go again, but you also have to realize that you've got a waning moon probably coming into you for three now. So do you keep a blue card in hand to pay for the frostbites and make that go? So it looks like they do. They're going to just spend nearly everything, come in with a graveling growl, pay for those frostbites. So the frost text doesn't do much here. But this is kind of the opportunity to see whether or not they have a blue in hand to pitch to a uh, the waning moon if it does come in. Absolutely. This is definitely intense. And you do want to make sure that it's getting covered on there oh my goodness so yeah able to get those frostbites out of the way that is absolutely fantastic with that frost hex on there and and icelander gave up a lot to get that fresh frost hex out there so like that was a big deal i mean they gave up they pitched some power cards yeah you might see it later this is going to be a slow grindy game but there was a lot of sacrifice in there Mm hmm. So we got we got a little Boneyard Marauder coming out now. We still got a hit. So Levi doesn't have to worry about blood debt or anything. It's very good. But we have to see whether or not more damage can be presented from Icelander's side, because now Icelander being at six, it's a lot of cards in Levi's deck that comes in for six damage. So this is near lethal almost every single turn if they have the resources for it. I definitely, I definitely think that with the ability to again just makes you know be able to do things on your opponent's turn, you have to really know what resources you're going to keep in your hands and which resources you're going to play. You don't want to overextend. Looks like Icelander's going to block for six here, just a clean block. Most of the time, Icelander just wants to put a put a nice card in Arsenal and forget about the rest of it. So if they're comfortable blocking, Ooh, it does look Ooh. like the hooves of Shadow Beast was popped. To give this uh, to gain another action point. Oh, so that and, will definitely change it. So yeah, so coming in with that Aether Ice Vein, like this is actually really, really big because Henry just committed to hooves. Mm hmm. So now it's you know it's you either got to discard, you got to pitch for it. So you got to make sure that you're able to utilize that card in your arsenal, and hopefully they are. I mean going to be very very interesting to see you get the spell void taken off of there that's a great use of the spell void for uh aether ice vein just block out as much of it as you can coming in with the wild ride for six we're uh, gonna see whether or not we get the go again 
but I looks like they are not. They're not doing, getting any kind of go again. Looks like they got a blue that was discarded off of that. So, and honestly, that's the time when you would love that. That that's you don't care about that because you didn't. You weren't looking for the go again. You had no follow right. up. So mm-hmm. that's kind of if you're gonna whiff, that seems like the perfect. Time that is that is the time to whiff. And and now Icelander at two. This is really really scary. I mean, no no additional arcane damage has been dealt to uh, Levia since. Uh, you know, they've been sitting at ten for quite some time, and now these giant attacks are coming through. This endless maw is coming in. So now you have uh, more and more powerful things coming through this is for nine they have to block it out entirely otherwise they're just gonna take more damage than they need to yep and this is when you put something in their arsenal and just pass and try to live another turn so Mm -hmm. i feel like if i'm icelander i don't know if you can maybe you can pull full 10 damage off but usually because you know we don't have we have our equipment suite doesn't allow us to blast people out of the water, obviously, because no legendaries. And so Icelander kind of tends to want it to be a little bit below 10. I think she can reach 10 if she needs to with a little bit of help, but I don't know that we, we're going to have the help at the moment. Yeah, I definitely think it's going to be very interesting because you don't have, I mean, even an Emeritus Scolding Blue into the Waning Moon is probably not enough to deal lethal here uh, i think it looks like the plan maybe is just to make sure these frostbites get out and really kind of chip through a little bit more of that damage before they're possibly in emeritus scalding kill range but i don't know they've got a lot of resources in their deck uh, over in Leviah. so although this is an all red hand it looks like they just had so very difficult for them absolutely that's five go again but a lot of that is just hey we're just trying to Get out that frost hex at the moment. Mm-hmm. And there's the D react. The sink below. See, mm, I see. I think I probably would have just used the sink below and then been able to keep the frost hex in arsenal. Uh, the overblock there, you would have gone down to one if you just did the sink below. But I'm not sure if uh, if that was a, a you know. Obviously, it looks like Tep has got some calculated plans for wizards, so they're. Uh, trying to really make sure that they're alive, obviously getting a little bit more damage down. So now Levi is sitting at eight and Icelander is sitting at two. We're going to see whether or not they can just keep providing a whole bunch of damage and maybe even get a dominate attack off if something happens there. Yeah, I think that that's maybe type of thought is, hey, you know, dominate attack coming in. The only thing is most dominate attacks are six and a direct is, is four. Um so I think that's why they put in the arsenal to just try and hold it off. But now it's out because you can't just sit on a D react with. Correct. Yeah. With Icelander. All right. So the shade and swing coming in, being able to go ahead and banish that six. So that way they don't have to take any kind of blood debt. And then again, it's just six more damage. You know, you got to block it out or, or do your worst. There's the finals fighting spirit though. So now you're there at least going to be gaining a life and they're going to be uh blocking out pretty efficiently only losing one so really losing nothing it's a net neutral kind of life loss there and they get to more than likely just arsenal that what i'd imagine to be a ice card in their uh arsenal there yeah and i think icelander was looking at possibly maybe trying to hang on to that if she could but you know coming coming back for a seven kickback is is scary but Mm -hmm. you know it's basically just a three block so the convulsions coming in now. This is also, you know, obviously looks like they're pretty close. Uh, Leviah does look like they might not be able to transform here. And now they're lower on life. But the convulsions coming in uh, looks like Icelander's just going to try and push as much damage as possible through with the frosting and then with a waning moon. So you've got that frostbite on your opponent's side. And then the waning moon, we're going to see whether or not they pitch anything or if they have more uh, terrifying arcane hands here. A hundred percent. Now you could get Leviah redeemed if you get enough blood dead in there. And I think that's what Henry's goal is ultimately is to hit that Leviah redeemed. I think you need like 15 mm-hmm. blood dead in there though. Right now, right now there's I, 19 cards in there and I don't think they're quite close. And there it is. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. It doesn't look like they were able to present enough. Looks like the dominate came in and dominate is able to do it. That's pretty much what looks like what Henry was looking to, uh, 
to do with that. Thank you guys for joining us today. Alex, where can I find you? Well, uh, you can go ahead and find me over at Ashen Wings TCG over on YouTube. You know, we like to also post some Clash gameplay and commoner stuff over there, too. So if you guys like the more lower end formats, by all means, feel free to find me on there. You can also find me on Twitter at Ashen Wings. That's where I like to kind of just talk about the new stuff that happens in Flesh and Blood and just like to com- connect with the community. Absolutely. And I'm Nathaniel. You can find me here if you're watching it. This is where I live. I'm the guy behind the the camera editing. So if it's crappy, you know, just message me and tell me how terrible it is. <laughs> right, we'll try to fix it. Uh, but we appreciate everyone joining us here. Ooh.